the OECD is the international organization that creates these tax rules and creates the draft double taxation treaties. But each one is slightly different, but it includes ways to establish and settle differences between the two. Now, they may be contained within the double taxation and, and, and agreement and quite clear. But then when you go beyond to the next level uh, and you're trying to get a decision, whether you're making this decision in a court, uh, a tax tribunal or appeals, or whether you make it on a tax return, these are the factors that the tax man is looking at. First of all, is looking at where is your permanent home? So where are you continually living in? So um, it, it, in fact, now, post-Brexit, you know, it, it's tightened up for EU expats within the EU. It's that, and it's a truth for most countries, you've got to have a permanent residence for your business or for your family in that country of residence for you to become a, a tax resident there. Um, and per, having a permanent home is the first criteria of becoming a tax person in that jurisdiction. So that is the first test. So where is your permanent home? But some expats will have a home in two or three or, or, or more countries. Um, and so if the permanent home rule doesn't work, there isn't a definitive place, it then comes about where where the, the centre of the uh, family and business interests are. So where is the family living? Where is the business based? Where is the economic uh, activity arising from? And, and that can give the uh, authorities or that can demonstrate in the tax return that we do for clients that the, the earnings are from abroad in the expat country of tax residents and that the UK trip it is a short holiday or short business trip and the economic activity is not the UK and therefore the tax should be uh, payable and accessible in the expat country. So that centre of interest is, is a key point to argue to defend an expat's uh, non-resident status in the UK. If it fails, then the next line that the, uh, uh, ex, uh, that the UK will use is its habitual habits okay now if you want to live um, as some people used to do it in the north of france and jersey and and travel into the uk for the working week uh, for some of the year and avoid uh, tax like that it doesn't work anymore if you're um frequently traveling to the uk habitually uh, then you can still be considered to be dual residents so if you've got a business interest in the uk and you're traveling regularly every month every week or twice a month or whatever then that that habit and routine to manage your economic affairs in the UK can deem you to be resident in the UK and when you are dual resident potentially you can pay tax at the highest rate in that jurisdiction and then the final criteria would be nationality so it, it, if if it's not clear um, whether you're tax resident or not, by default, the UK have always got this extra hold on UK expats uh, that their nationality would define that they're liable for those UK taxes. Uh, for a non-EU, ex non-UK expat living and working in the UK, they wouldn't have that uh, constraint with the UK, but they'd have that constraint with their home country, be that Denmark, Cyprus, uh, Portugal. That, that those are the four steps that the uh, a double taxation treaty and international rules it, it, it determines whether somebody uh, is tax resident in one country or another, whether the expat is uh, in which country they're liable for the tax in, where the permanent home is, where the centre of interests are, where they habitually uh, live and work, and, and what their nationality are.